Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Anonymous. The topic is importance of LSAT. It says, consider this hypothetical. Law School X, LSAT median 169, is considering the following two applicants and can only admit one. Applicant A, GPA 3.8, LSAT 168, Worked as a paralegal at a large law firm. His letter of recommendation is written by a partner at the firm. Applicant B, GPA 3.8, so same as applicant A. LSAT 170, so two points higher than applicant A. No work experience at all. In the prior ranking system, Law School X would be incentivized to admit B and deny A because doing so would help their medians and increase their rank. However, in the current system, that is the new U.S. News ranking methodology, we talked about that on episode uh, 600 of LSAT Demon Daily, by the way. And in the current system, says our anonymous correspondent, it would be in the law school's interest to admit A and deny B, as applicant B has shown no ability to get jobs and applicant A has, so applicant A is a safer bet. Well, but you're ignoring the fact that LSAT is still part of the law school ranking. I mean, the new U.S. News methodology did, I think it reduced LSAT from 12.5% of the ranking down to 5% of the ranking. But 5% mm -hmm. of the ranking is not 0% of the ranking. Mm -hmm. And if this law school has a median of 169, I mean, they're ranked on their medians. So there still is an incentive to admit applicant B, the one with the higher LSAT. I guess I am willing to acknowledge that the incentive might have shifted a bit because employment outcomes and bar passage rates, well, bar passage rate still to me argues in favor of LSAT. Yeah. Uh, because it's an exam. Employability, I, I am willing to grant that sure, having some work experience, especially paralegal and big law letter of recommendation written by somebody up, you know, higher who's like, yes, this is a big law lawyer in the making. I get yeah. it that 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 is that is stronger under the new regime. But <laughs> in this specific example where the law school has an LSAT median of 169 and one of these candidates is above the median and one of these candidates is below the median, to me there's still a pretty strong incentive in favor of hey, we got to keep our medians up. Especially because employability is kind of you know, just because somebody hasn't yet worked as a paralegal in a large law firm doesn't mean that they're not going to be employable in big law, especially yeah. when they have the LSAT that indicates that they've got the horsepower to get it done in big law. But you want to say anything more before I finish this email from Anonymous? No, I agree with everything you said. I think it's just um, Anonymous seems to think that the employability is quantifiable. Yes, in the ranking system, they have allocated certain percentages to these things, including 5% to the LSAT. But how schools see these factors and even this experience and how much weight they give to that now is unknown. Yet this, the correspondent is acting as if it is known, like, oh, now they're going to go with candidate B. I, I would just say, I don't know. Yeah. I think... <laughs> and I do agree with you, those hard numbers, especially when you're looking at it above and below the median. <laughs> when it's right That's... above and right below, especially when we look at what schools have done historically, yeah. which, you know, we, we can tell by looking at those charts of who's getting admitted, who's getting waitlisted, who's getting denied. Uh, what site did those come from again? Uh, law school data, maybe? Or yeah, LSD.org. LSD. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. LSD.org. They have they have these beautiful charts that are just like, hey, here's all the applicants, or at least all the people who reported that they applied to these schools. And, you know, here's their LSAT, here's their GPA, who's here's who got in, here's who got denied. And you see these straight lines where it's like, oh, at 170, they admitted everybody, and at 168, they admitted nobody. And, you know, I this this change in the U.S. news methodology certainly might affect that. To be clear, but, it's not nobody. You have a few dots right below. Yeah, relatively these speaking. Lines. You know. but, but the vast, vast majority. And so 
maybe those lines are a little bit blurrier now, but the right. question is how much, right? right? How much right. blurrier are they? Right. Yeah. Right. I, I appreciate that Anonymous is sharing this argument with us. You know, I, yeah. I get it. And I'm willing to grant that there's probably some validity here. Uh, but I, I don't think that the effect is going to be as dramatic as Anonymous seems to think. Anyway, Anonymous continues. Additionally, I think you would both agree that two to three point score differences are not significant in determining one's ability to succeed in law school. The same applicant could score three points differently on two practice tests on the same day. True. But <laughs> what we're talking about is the highest official LSAT on record. That you could muster. And that could either be after five attempts or after one, but both of those things are revealing, right? If it's after one attempt, then you're not willing to put in the time and effort to keep going. If it's after five attempts, then that's the best you could eke out after five tries. There's something to be said about that best score. It, it measures not just like the, it, it does measure some of the randomness that you got on that day, but it also measures how hard you were willing to grind you know, it measures whether you were willing to invest another year of your life potentially to take the test four or five times to allow yourself to be in the position to get the benefit of that randomness, which is certainly an employable feature. And, you know, it's just the, the problem is when all else is equal, I think employers are going to prefer higher LSAT. It just, you know, our schools and employers are going to are going to prefer higher LSAT when all else is equal. I agree that two to three points, yeah, probably means nothing or could mean nothing. But if I don't have anything else to go on, then I have to prefer that. Mm -hmm. OK. Anonymous continues. This is not to say that that the employability advantage couldn't be overwhelmed by a massive difference in LSAT scores, but just that in circumstances like the one above, the LSAT is less important than it was prior to the rankings methodology change. I think we are willing to grant that. It's probably less important, but how much? We don't really know. Yeah. I think massive well, we, difference is something that is going to be like relative to to because I would be willing to say that, like, if it's six or seven points, that's a massive difference. That's a massive difference. Yet some people may or may not know what massive means. I guess it's what's but been left out here. We're steeped in this, right? We do this all the time. We hire people based on their LSAT scores. You have to have a 170 or higher to work at LSAT Demon. There's a big difference between a 166 and a 171. Yeah. Big difference. Like that's a big difference in actual abilities. Yeah. Um, sorry, but it's true. In my experience, you know, 15 years of working in this world, it, it means something. And I think the law schools know it means something. And I think the employers know it means something. Again, says Anonymous, I agree with you that the LSAT will still matter. I just think you're wrong to suggest that it's bad speculation to say it won't decline in importance at all. Thanks again for all you do. Did we say that? Maybe we said that. You might have said that. <laughs> okay. Not that, not that you, that's what you meant, but right? You have a tendency to like speak hy say hyperbolically. The general, yeah, say the general rule in like, a, like an absolute... Form. Right. Right. But that's fine. I, I, I also, though, I do remember, I believe you making the argument that LSAT might matter more. Yeah. And that's what I was just about to say. Yeah. I, I, the hard line here is I don't know. And I think yeah. you would agree. We don't sure. know. And this is why we need to wait for the data to come in and see. But as much as people think, oh, the LSATs, I mean, we were reacting to to the news, right? The news reporting on this is, oh, LSAT doesn't matter anymore. It's like, oh, it's definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Speaking about like hyperbolics, right? Yeah. Even people who are legal tech professionals say things like, well, there's not even that many schools that are involved in the U.S. that are, that are in the U.S. news rankings anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's like, whoa, wait a second. So you're, re- you're reading that headline that says that Harvard is no longer participating in the U.S. News Ranking Survey. And you're taking mean. from that that Harvard is no longer in the U.S. News Rankings. Yeah. Oh, Those right. do not mean the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not at all the same thing. Yeah. And so, um, yes, we, we do have a way of being influenced by the news. And I, I think what you're talking about, Ben, is us reacting in opposition to that going, yeah. wait a second, you're trying to like people are saying LSAT's not going to matter anymore. Bullshit. LSAT still matters a lot. And um, could it matter less in this world? I think we're open to that possibility. Oh, absolutely. If, if I had to make a prediction and if I had to bet, I'd say it's probably weighted a little less now. But I'm totally open to the possibility that it is also going to end up being weighted more because it's going to be a proxy for these things that are weighted more and weren't weighted yeah. as much before. For example, yeah. employability. Uh as opposed to reputation, yeah. which was the biggest elephant in the room and also kind of dumb. And it and it can be more and less at the same time. That's and not then, <laughs> that's not yeah. a contradiction. Right. This is actually an LSAT logical reasoning lesson because you can have something acting in favor of something while something else or even that exact same thing acting in opposition to that. And yeah. so here it's like, well, sure, they dropped the waiting for LSAT medians, they're dropping that in their rankings. So that seems to be a clear incentive for law schools to not care as much about LSAT. At the same time, they increased bar passage rate and employability as part of the U.S. news rankings. And what better proxy do people have for bar passage rate than LSAT? They don't. That's the best proxy that they have for bar passage rate is LSAT. Yeah, and it's a proxy that can be um, put into an order, right? In a spreadsheet, like, yes. Yeah, th- this example is interesting because Anonymous here talks about a paralegal who's at a large law firm who got a letter of recommendation written by a partner. Okay, maybe the best possible employment stat that you can throw at a law school, but how are they going to compare that to everything else, right? Oh, someone who worked at a bar or someone who worked at a... Who knows what, like a tech job. Oh, oh, they're employable, but are they employable legally? I hmm, I don't when, know. When they've got 5,000 applicants for 500 spots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when they know that LSAT medians are still part of the U.S. news ranking. And when now confronted with, hey, you know, we're also going to be ranked on the employability and bar passage rate of our students. Hmm. How do we sort through these 5,000 people and figure out who's going to pass the bar and who's going to be employable? Hmm. Well, we could just keep using LSAT because LSAT does a great job of predicting bar passage. And as an employer, I'm here to tell you that it's very attractive from an employability standpoint. Anything else we want to say to Anonymous? No, thanks for writing in. Thanks for the thoughtful question. Yeah, thanks. That was an excellent question. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening. 